it is Lady B, and it is Sunday school time. I got a question for you. Do you believe in prophecy? Do do you do you believe in prophecy? Do you really um, believe that God has spoken to people, and the words that He has spoken to them? It's going to come to pass. You know, in, in Revelation um, chapter 19, verse 10, that latter part, it says that uh, the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. So in other words, prophecy, and this is my paraphrase now, it's supposed to point us back to Jesus. It's supposed to show us uh, the truths of Jesus as the Messiah and the true coming King. Now, I know there's a lot of, stuff out there now and people are calling it prophecy but true prophecy always points us back to Jesus Christ it always points us back to God and what God has said what God has revealed in his word to his creation and I say that because prophecies can go to the unbeliever just like it can go to the believer and so in our lesson on today uh god is going to be giving a word to habakkuk um concerning judah and concerning babylon and i'm asking you the question about prophecy because as we look at what is going on in our world what we believe dictates our behavior so if we're not listening to the voice of the prophets through our pastors and our teachers and those who are really prophetic um, and speaking to us about these end times, we're not going to live our lives um, in such a way that it's really going to protect us and, 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 and get us closer to the Lord. And so as we go through this lesson on today, as we see our lesson today is about Habakkuk praising God's faithfulness. Let me put that up there so we don't forget it. It is about him praising God's faithfulness. But God is going to be giving um, Habakkuk some harsh words. And Habakkuk is going to have to choose to um, trust God in the midst of these difficult words. This difficult um, word vision that he's going to get from the Lord. And so as we go through this lesson on today, I pray um, that you will find yourself saying, okay, Lord, I, I'm hearing what you're saying and I see what you're going to do and I'm going to trust you. I'm going to hold on to you. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We bless you. The entrance of your word brings light. We thank you for this time of Sunday school. We thank you for all the words we've been um, receiving through Sunday school from the ancient prophets. God, I see and I pray that the students see all of the application in our current lives. Oh, God, help us. Help us, Lord. Help us to be sober and alert. Help us to gird up our minds and um, really hear, have an ear to hear a spirit to receive, and a heart to obey. In your matchless name we pray, amen. All right, so I got to watch this this throat of mine. Um, you know, we are in the, the, the second unit of this quarter, and this quarter is about uh, being faithful to prophesy. And we've spoken about Haggai, and, and we've talked about Micah, and now... We're going to be uh, talking about Habakkuk. And I, I, I really just want to challenge us again that as we go through these prophets, and this is why I like to do the charts. I, You know, I'm a visual person, and I, I'm quite sure somebody else is visual. I like to show the charts because we get to see how many people were prophesying the same thing to the same people and the folks didn't want to hear. And I, I bring that up because remember, the title of this unit is Faithful to Prophesy. 
and God is calling us as servants of God. We've got to be faithful to proclaim the truth even when we're struggling with it. In our lesson on today, Habakkuk is struggling with it. Well, wait a minute, God. Now, I, I asked you this question and um, I'm struggling with the answer. There are going to be times as we as men and women of God, there are going to be times that God is going to give us a word. It's going to stick in our throat. We're going to struggle with it. We are, are going to be like, God, are you sure? Did I hear that right? Maybe I need to fast again. Maybe I need to, to pray again, you know. And so we ourselves are going to have to just know and trust that God is speaking and he's true to his word and he has a plan. You know, prophecy is not always positive. And a lot of this prophecy, cars and houses, and you're going to get married and all those things, but I'm living a sloppy life. That's not the, the, the prophecies that are coming from the true spirit of God. Remember what we said, and put, let's put that back up there. Remember what we said in scripture, that prophecy is, is the spirit of God. Um, let me let me quote it right. The testimony of Jesus Christ, the evidence, the witness of Jesus Christ is the heart of prophecy. So you know it's true prophecy when it challenges you, when it provokes you to run to Jesus, to serve Jesus, to, to keep his commandments, to study his word, to commune with him, to let go of sin. That's when you know it's true prophecy. If it causes you to just um, be more self-consumed and more focused, that is not true prophecy. It's not true prophecy. I don't care who it is. I don't care when they said it. Your preacher needs to be pointing you to Jesus Christ. Your mentor, your spiritual mentor, your whoever we call him, my spiritual mother, my spiritual father, they should be pointing you to Jesus Christ and him alone. You know, I saw something today and it broke my heart because I'm seeing it more and more and more. I don't care who it is. I don't care what their title is. I don't care how famous they are as a gospel, whatever. They are not God. Only Jesus is the standard. And so maybe some of you saw it and a uh, famous gospel singer, uh, they not using godly words. Let me just say it like that. And so people were saying things like we're all human and that's nothing because I talk worse than that. And just all kind of comments. We are forgetting that the only standard is Jesus Christ. That's the only standard. I'm not the standard. My pastor is not the standard. My mama is not the standard. My Sunday school teacher is not the standard. The only standard is Jesus Christ. And so what I have to do, what you have to do, what we've got to teach and what we've got to preach and what we've got to encourage and exhort that let's get into the word of God and find out what God said and then let's do what God said. I cannot stress this enough. If you are at a church where your pastor can get up and talk for an hour and never crack open the book, they don't crack open the book. You still don't know where Genesis is. You didn't even know Habakkuk was a book in the Bible. That's a problem. That's, that's a problem. And I'm going to tell you something. I mean this. I don't care how long you've been there. If you cannot say with a surety, with certainty, that where you're going, you're getting line upon line, precept upon precept teaching ask God to send you somewhere where the leadership takes the word of God seriously and they're going to hold you to the standard of the word of God in revelation when it talks about the books being open you got to know it's not our denominational book it's not our opinion book or our journal it's going to be the word of God and you're going to be and I'm going to be judged by the word of God. I, I just had to get that out. 
So people of God, let's stop saying things like stop judging and we're all human and, and you act like nobody else makes a mistake. That's not even what the point is. The point is the Bible of God, the Bible says, be holy because I'm holy. That's that's the point. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 48, uh, be perfect because your father's perfect. So that doesn't sound like we're all human. That sounds like God expects us to live a certain way. And then we also know that he has provided the Holy Spirit so that we will live that way. Now, that's the word of God. You know, I, I don't judge myself against anyone else. So our golden text says, um, Habakkuk says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Habakkuk 3, 18. And so we're going to find that although Habakkuk struggles with the answer he gets from God, at least three chapters that we have of, of, of this, this book, this prophecy of Habakkuk, he's going to pose a question to God and God's going to give him an answer. And Habakkuk is going to struggle with that answer. And God's going to come back and say, okay. But this is what I want you to write. And I want you to write it in such a way. I want you to write it in big, bold letters that if they pass by, they can see it. That's what it means by write the vision and make it plain. So we're going to be talking about that today. So the facts of our lesson today are to understand how we can bring ourselves to praise the Lord, even in the midst of trial and how he can still use our ministry, even while we are suffering while Habakkuk is observing the sin of his nation he was suffering because of the sin of his nation you know that's one of those Selah moments am I suffering because of the sin of my nation or do I not care is my head bowed low because sin has increased in my nation, in my country, in my community. Could be even in your church or your home. You know, wherever our nation turns, what direction it goes, it affects all of us. It doesn't just affect a few of us. I hear people lie all the time about how they're not going to be affected by this world because they're believers. I'm trying to figure out where that is in the Bible. We have too many examples of people being affected by the sin of their nation now will we be ultimately rescued most definitely either through death or the rapture but until one of those two things happen we are going to be affected by the sin of our nation and so we should be burdened we should be saddened by the sin of our nation so that we would understand how we can bring ourselves to praise the Lord, even in the midst of a trial and how he can still use our ministry, even while we are suffering. And, you know, in case I forget to say it, you know how we do that? We choose to trust him. No matter what happens, God, I'm going to trust you because I know you're faithful. I know you're faithful. I, I have to tell you, there are times when I pray and my heart is so burdened. I, I can't even get the request out. But what I can get out is, God, I know you're God. I know you're in control. I know you see me. I know you hear me. I know that you are God. And, and that's sometimes all you can, you can get out. All you can get out is declaring this is who you are. And on the basis of that, I'm going to trust you. That's where our trust comes from. Knowing who he is. Knowing what he has said. This is why we got to be in a Bible teaching, a Bible believing church. People of God, we are in the last hours of this world system as we know it. This is not the time to stay in a dead church. 
Your soul is at stake. The soul of your children are at stake. Maybe they don't have a famous choir. Maybe they don't have fancy music. Maybe the building is not all whatever. But if that pastor, if the leadership there can teach you the word of God. Oh, I, oh God, this is so in my heart. We need to know the word of God. Habakkuk was able to praise God, praise his faithfulness because he knew what God had said in his law to his people, the Jews, and he knew that even though God was saying, yes, they're going to have to go into captivity, that ultimately he was going to restore his people, that ultimately he was going to bring healing. And that's what he, he held on to. So while the gas prices go up and the food prices go up and more and more people are losing their homes because they can't afford the rent because the rent is going high everywhere and more people are sick and cannot um, afford the medical care and people are losing their jobs and the COVID numbers are going back up in the midst of all of that we know that our God is faithful and he has promised never to leave us or to forsake us we have to know that suffering ultimately accomplishes God's good purposes. God is not haphazard. He is not haphazard. Remember Romans 8 and 28? Let me type that. You know, these scriptures come to me as, as I'm talking and I always forget sometimes. I always forget sometimes. Remember Romans 8 and 28? It says all things work together for the good not some things not some things so in what i'm going through right now i can praise god because i know that i'm called see that's the rest of the verse sometimes we tell unbelievers well you know the bible says all things work together child this is going to work out for you stop lying to the people all things work together for the good to them that love god to them who are the called according to his purpose. So all things work together for the good, for the called, not for everybody, but the called, the saved, the blood bought, the redeemed, the spirit filled, that's going to work together for your good. Even if you in a situation that you had no business, if you belong to God, it's going to work out for your good. And God is going to get the glory out of it. He promised that he would. And so we rest in him. And so then the application is to help Christians who suffer, understand, and access, access God's resources for enduring. Now, I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. Very seldom are we told that God allows suffering. And I hear people say things like, suffering is not of God. I'm not sure where they get that from because our Lord suffered. He told us in St. John 16:33. Okay, here we go. You know these scriptures get to come into me. And <laughs> one day I'm going to have a sister where I could just pull them up. In, in, in St. John 16, 33, he told us, in this world, we're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer because I've already overcome the world. He said, I'm telling you this stuff so you'll know. Don't be surprised when you go through. Don't be surprised when you suffer. Don't be surprised when everything is not running on all i don't know how many cylinders is supposed to be eight he's don't we're not supposed to be surprised so we want to in this lesson on today one of the goals of this lesson is to help christians who suffer who are suffering right now understand and access god's resources for enduring his resource of joy and peace and rest and understanding we're going to trust him. We're going to trust him. Listen, people of God, where we are right now in our culture, where we are in our culture right now, we're going to have to figure this out. 
I'm going to have to trust God. This ain't going too well. So I'm going to have to trust God. So in our scripture today, Habakkuk, Habakkuk, I got to say this right. Habakkuk, I was going to say Habakkuk, but it's Habakkuk. Two and one, I will stand before my watch and set me upon the tower. And I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Yea, also because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlarges his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth up unto him all people. And then the lesson skips to chapter 3. And it says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hind's feet. And he will make me to walk upon mine high places to the chief singer on my stringed instrument instruments. So let's look at this. Let's look at our lesson on today. Habakkuk had asked Jesus. Habakkuk had asked God a question. And I'm about to paraphrase, but we're in chapter one. He said to God, don't you see all this sinning? Don't you see how these Jews are living? The destruction, the violence, the arguing, the fighting, the injustice. Don't you see, God? Excuse me. <coughs> I'm, I'm almost out of this. I'm doing good. I'm not coughing. He says, God, don't you see what's going on? Don't you see what's going on? And God says, yep, I see it. And what I'm going to do is, I'm sending Babylon. And my people, even though they're my children, I'm going to send them into captivity. And so then Habakkuk says, whoa, wait, 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 one minute, God. How are you going to use more I'm saying this wrong. How are you going to use Babylon, who's even more wicked than Judah? So let's look at here. So they, 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 they're drunks and they're greedy. They're, they're, Babylon was conquering the known world. So their brutal and treatment of the conquering of the nations they were conquering. They were shedding blood. They were merchants of terror. They were destroying other people's lands, and they were idolatrous. Now, this was Babylon. And so Habakkuk is saying, now, wait a minute, God. How are you going to use this wicked nation to punish Judah? Because, see, now, this is why I tell people, when is God going to judge them? God needs to deal with them. We need to take the J word out of our mouths because we're not ready for justice. Because remember, not only is God just, but he's merciful. He's righteous. When he comes to judge, he got to judge everything. So let's not be quick. So Habakkuk started out, okay, God, look at the destruction, look at the violence, look at the arguing, look at the fighting, look at the injustice. And God said, okay, I'm about to answer you. I see it, Habakkuk. And so I have decided to spank, to chastise my people by sending Babylon. And then he says, but Babylon is worse. <laughs> Babylon is worse than Judah. 
But God tells Habakkuk, but I, this answer that I gave you, I need you to write it down. I need you to put it on tablets. I need you to put it in big letters so when people were passing by, they would know what I said. That's what, you know, people have taken the scripture out of context. When talking about write the vision and make it plain. This is about this destruction that's coming. Make it plain means make it big enough for everybody to read it. Because Habakkuk had said, and when he says here in verse 1, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. He 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 thought he was in trouble because he, he, he was not happy that God had told him he was sending Babylon. And so, write the letters clear enough that everyone can get the message. And even though it might appear that God is delaying judgment, Babylon will eventually be crushed. So what he says to him is, I need you to let them know, I'm going to get them for their sin. But I also need you to let them know, I'm going to get Babylon for putting their hands on my people. See, you see the dual thing? That's why you can't put your mouth on folks that belong to God. You, me, we can't put our mouths on people. Because let me tell you something. If you belong to God, he's going to spank you. Parents, good parents, discipline their children. But what you don't want to be is the instrument of that spanking. You want you don't want to be called, ah, oh God, I'm good. Remember David? Remember David? They were like, oh, King David, you done got Saul jammed up in the cave. This is God knows. David said, I can't touch the anointing of God. I won't be the one. I don't care what he's treating me like. I will not be the one. And so then he says, until then, those in exile should live by faith. When we look at verse 4, he says, behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live. So when he talks about live by faith in the midst of this Exile, in the midst of this captivity, I need you to trust me. In the midst of you losing your home and your land, I need you to trust me. I need you to have an active, governing, controlling faith in me while I take you through this process. And then in verse 5, it, with all of the pride and the arrogance that Babylon had, God is saying, I'm going to deal with Babylon. And if you, if you know the history, God dealt with Babylon. So let's look at this right quick. We have been talking about um, Judah. I know, I, I, let me see, I meant to put another slide here. So let me put this one up. If you see here that Israel's there at the top, and then Judah is down there at the bottom. So remember, we have continued to talk about um, the two nations. Once they split, all of Israel was split, and then ten nations became Israel, the northern kingdom, and then the um, southern kingdom became Judah. So I don't know if you remember, but we talked about the fact that Judah um, had three deportations. Now we talked before about how, um, Israel was going to fall to Assyria. And I do have a chart for that. Israel was going to fall to Assyria because that's what, remember, that's what Michael was saying. Israel was being attacked by Assyria and the sins of Israel had started flowing over the border into Judah. So Israel fell, the 10 tribes, the Northern Kingdom fell in 722 BC to Assyria. And then Assyria was conquered by Babylon. And 605 BC, the nobility and the young men were taken to Babylon, which includes Daniel. And we have talked about before how Daniel was in the first deportation Ezekiel was in the second and then the third and the final one when Jerusalem fell in 586 BC. This is when Jeremiah was prophesied, even though Jeremiah did not go into exile. He was allowed to stay in Jerusalem, but that's when um, 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 Jerusalem ultimately fell 
to Babylon. So it is believed that um, Habakkuk is prophesying around this time of 605 when God is saying to him, Judah is getting ready to fall to Babylon. So if you if you if you can see this chart here, we see that Israel falls. That was 722 BC. Judah falls in 586 BC. And as I told you before, I like um, the charts because you can see where the prophets fall. So you see here that Habakkuk is prophesying during the time of Zephaniah, during the time of Nahum. Um, right before Jeremiah is prophesying, Daniel is prophesying in captivity, Ezekiel is prophesying in captivity. And so in our lessons, we kind of went backwards. We were dealing with um, the post-exilic time. And let me show you this chart here. And so we see here that um, the pre-exilic prophets, Hosea, Amos, Micah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Joel, Zephaniah, Habakkuk, before they went into captivity. And then we have uh, Jonah and Nahum who were prophesying to Assyria. And I don't know if you remember that, but remember when Jonah didn't want to go? Uh, Nineveh, the capital of Assyria, was who Jonah was sent to. And then we have uh, Obadiah prophesying to Edom and tell Edom that they were going to fall. But now Lamentations is not a prophet. Remember that Lamentations was written by Jeremiah, but it was written because Jeremiah saw Jerusalem fall in 586 BC. And then we have um, Ezekiel and Daniel both prophesying in Babylon. Remember, Daniel was the first, he, he went into the first deportation. And then Ezekiel, the priest, went into the second. It is believed that Daniel worked in the courts, or he, he was royalty. Now, I want you guys to hear this and see this again. This is why I, I asked the question, do you believe in prophecy? Because when we look at this chart, it wasn't just the sinners who were affected by the sin of the nation. And so I believe that lessons like today, God is using to speak to us and to get our hearts ready to receive what he's allowing to come, even into our nation, even into our nation. I know we're believing God for this, that, and the other, but you know, God's answer might be beans and rice that still means we've never seen the righteous forsaken or the seed begging bread we think that means we're always going to have abundance god didn't promise us that he promised to take care of us this is why we need to be in scripture this is why i love sunday school so much because good sunday school lesson with a good teacher is equipping us to live in this present time i i, I just had to i just had to say that Y'all know me here. Okay, and I guess we don't really uh, need to do that. So I want us to actually, let's, um, we, we, we'll get to that. So when we look at this lesson, when we look at this lesson, when we look at this lesson and we see that Habakkuk, or Habakkuk is living during a time when sin is rampant, does that sound familiar? We are living in a time that sin is rampant. And we go to God and we say, God, don't you see? Do you see the injustice? Do you see the crime weight? Do you see how they, you know, they're raping and pillaging my paycheck? God, do you see what they're forcing on us, God, do you see? And God will speak through a prophet and say, I see. And this is what I'm going to allow because of this. And so what we have to know is every answer from prophecy is not going to be instantaneous deliverance. It may be for an appointed time. 
And so what we have to do is hear and receive the word of the Lord and say, God, what I'm going to do is wait on you and trust you. That's what we have to do. Let's look at this last part and I'll be done. The writer Habakkuk says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail and the, the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls. What is Habakkuk saying? God, I know you're faithful. And you are saying that you're about to kick us out of this land. You're about to kick us out of our inheritance because of our sin. You're about to kick us out of our inheritance. But then he goes on to say, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. God, this is going to be a difficult time. This is going to be a hard time. It's just like Jeremiah when he saw Israel being destroyed and he wept. He That's where lamentations come from. But he said, great is your faithfulness. Your mercies are renewed every morning. See, and we, if we really believe God, if we really are choosing to be faithful to prophecy, we know that even when the prophecy hurts, even when it's difficult to understand, we are choosing to rejoice in God. We're choosing to trust him and to know that he is faithful. So he says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. You know, sometimes we pray and we ask God to save somebody's life, to spare their life. And God lets them go home. And we hurt behind that because we know that God is able to heal. It might be, you know, we know we're looking at losing a job. And we pray and we ask God, God, please don't let me lose my job. And we lose our job. Even in the midst of that, we must be faithful. Trust that God is faithful. Let our faith be our anchor. Plant our feet. Keep them solid on the rock, knowing that no matter what God allows, because he has a purpose behind it, there's something I don't see. There's something I don't know. And God, I choose to trust you, even though I'm reeling and I'm rocking and the wind is blowing and I'm shaking. God, I choose to hold. You know, they sang that song, hold to his hands. Can't sing on a horse. God's unchanging hand. You got to hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hands. We got to hold on. We got to be like, look who he said. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. I'm going to, Lord, when I get to church, I'm going to holler even louder. Things didn't go the way I wanted them to go. But, oh, God, I'm holding on. God, I thought you was going to answer a different way. But, God, I'm holding on. I'm holding on. Verse 19, the Lord God is my strength and he will make my feet like hind's feet. You don't need hind's feet if you're not in a rocky place. You don't need tough hooves if you just walking on soft grass. He will make my feet like hind feet and he will make me to walk upon mine high places. Those places of difficulty he's going to make it possible for me to navigate those times and then we see here it says to the chief singer on my stringed instruments so it is believed that Habakkuk was part of a choir or something and he had put this to song and he was telling them this is how I need y'all to sing my song you know so when you're going through God will give you a song and can't nobody sing it like you. 
You don't have to be the songstress because it is your testimony. And that's what we have here. So in our lesson on today, we find that Habakkuk praises God's faithfulness. He said, God is going to fix these spiritual feet of mine. I'm going to navigate these places. I'm not going to slip. I'm not going to be falling. God is going to give me the strength to navigate this because the just shall live by their faith. What I know to be true about God, I'm going to hold on to that. And that's why you got to be in a Bible teaching, a good Bible teaching church so that you will know what God has said and what God hasn't said so you'll know what to hold on to. So let me show, show you this and, and I will be done. Let's follow the example of Habakkuk. When we're burdened, we talk to God. When we bend it, we listen to God. He'll talk to us when we bow before him. Oh, God, you know, the church I came up in, I remember those old mothers. And they would be, the, bro the brothers too, they'd say, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, and that's all they'd be saying is, oh, God. Sometimes that's all you can say because the weight is so heavy. But when you, even that, that's what Romans says, God takes even that groan and he puts words to it. And he will speak to us just like he spoke to her Habakkuk. And when we are blessed, when we are blessed, we need to praise God. When he comes through. Now listen, that coming through might be the strength we need to keep standing in the midst of the storm that's a blessing. When he doesn't allow us to be destroyed in the midst of a struggle, we praise God for that. The blessing is not just when we come out. The blessing is he's with us in the storm. All right, so will you, will you, will you do it with me? Will you, will, you, will you do it with me? Will you praise God even when we don't know what we're going to do? We don't know where we're going to go. Will you praise him with me? Would you say, you know what? I'm standing on the word of God. I'm going to be faithful. I'm, I'm going to be true. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to believe in him because I know he's got me. Will you do that with me? Will you? Because you know what, y'all? We need this right now. We need this. We need a lesson like this. We need a reminder because it's difficult. It's difficult. It's We're living in difficult times. We're living in scary times. Gas high. They're talking about food shortages. They're talking about COVID and the monkeypox now. They're talking about the vaccine doesn't work with, with the COVID in the area where I live. They said we're number one in the country um, with cases now. I don't know where to get these numbers from. government is fighting and bickering and I keep saying this I don't care who we voted for we're all in trouble oh I know a man and we can be like Habakkuk and we can continue to praise God because we know that he is faithful will you continue to praise God with me in the midst of where we are right now in the midst of if we believe prophecy, judgment is here. Judgment is here. Is the worst judgment coming? I believe that too. Because that's what Revelation tells us. And that's what Daniel tells us. Something has got to happen that people will accept the, the Antichrist. But while we are here, will you be faithful with me? And will you stand firm and hold to God's unchanging hand? I want to thank everyone for come and listen, when you share, when you comment, I pray that I'm saying what God would have me to say, to encourage you, to lift you up, so that you will stand in this evil day. Remember this world is not our home.